Modern kids these days are unique. They'll identify just about as anything. Say there, kid. What? Who are you? I identify with the spirit of the land. I identify with mighty heroes. I identify with those seeking vengeance. And I identify as a problem. In the dark, dank year of uh, some numbers, there was only war. Hey there, kids! Are you ready to purge the heretics? Murder! Blood for the blood god, bones for the bone throne! That's basically what paladins think they are, when in reality they're incels that got superpowers thanks to their neat lifestyle. It's like a shitty isekai anime. Oh, sorry, no. I mean like every isekai garbage. FIGHT ME, NERDS! But seriously, paladins are just that, able to harness their insecurities and self-imposed bullshido and manifest it as mystical, magical, hocus-pocus mega nukes, like some bizarre version of crypto YouTubers. I mean, scammers. And god they pray to it, if there is one, is basically like a symbol to these space marines of the fantasy game and nothing more. You know, my second D&D character ever was a paladin? Now, coming from video games, I thought that that was a healer. Boy, was I wrong! I pretty much hated most of the time I played with the fucker, mostly because you had to be extremely rigid in your roleplay and even in combat. And sure, some of the wretched 4E people will be yelling at me. Oh, you dare to complain, you 5th edition entitled shit, you don't even know what rigid is if it was shoved up your ass! And true, with the 5th edition, paladins became more flexible. Well, it's still too bad that I didn't know how to play the game or the fucking class. So, learn from me. Don't pick paladin as your first class, unless you watch too much samurai anime, nor Warhammer 40k. Okay, okay, but how does the class work? Well, it's a melee fighter that does have spells and you can hocus pocus, but all of the spell bullets are always used to crank up the damage with every smite. Yes, you smite in fire, you smite in psychological, you smite in thunder, and you probably smite in autism too at this rate. It really doesn't matter how you do it, all of the spell slots are there to be abused for extra damage. But when it comes to paladins themselves, like most modern games, you either die here or live long enough to extort, abuse your player base with cosmetics, loot boxes, and most typically today, pay to win. I mean, like all roads lead to Rome, all hypocrisy leads to Oathbreaker. It's almost like religion, minus the pedo sh**. Because paladins have one track mind, and that's hitting things very, very hard, where their celibacy drives home the damage points, you can and will wear every scrap metal you possibly can to tank up the hits. Basically, you're like barbarian, but with stupid rules. Anyways, heavy armor and greatsword, or longsword and shield, take your pick. Very little will actually change, as even without trying on level 1, paladins are one of the 2 or 3 classes that can reach AC of 20 without problem, making you one of the mandatory abuse victims for the combat. But as for the usability, well, the paladin notes are an um, interesting mechanic, especially in Baldur's Gate. The intricate actions that suddenly cause the paladin to break the oaths are numerous and sometimes it even makes zero sense, though basically killing a bystander will probably do it. An emptiness grows within you, Paladin. You've broken your oath, Paladin. And hope you've unlocked the fourth hidden subclass of the Paladin, the Oathbreaker. And thus you become the problem child. And yet, oddly, all the Paladins function about the same. Same smites, same gear. So no matter which you'll pick, you'll be... Purge the heretic! Burn the unclean! Cleanse the lands with fire! But to be honest, out of all the classes, not to fuck up a pile, then you're probably gonna have to work hard. That or saves come the fuck out of the game. Alright, level 1. Strength and Charisma, that'll be the highest. Followed by Constitution and all else is pretty much dumb statted. So take your overgrown butter knife and enjoy the lobotomy. Now, unlike D&D, at level 1 you already get to pick your brand of incel dumb. Oath of Ancients, the nature team bullshito that has more healing, protection and crowd control. To keep the oath of this one, do not kick that squirrel, do not raise the dead and attack people unprovoked. You know, the casual Tuesday of a necromancer. Devotion. This is what the weebs think the hero is. Protect the weak and all that nonsense, but in reality you only pick this one for channel divinity at level 3, so that you can hit stuff better. Now, to keep the oath of this one, basically do the same thing. Don't be a cunt! Oath of Vengeance. This is the edgelord that is fueled by nothing but pure spite and hate. Basically, you get so pissed off at somebody that you suddenly start hitting better. And honestly, you actively have to try to break the oath of this one. But if you somehow manage to fuck up and break the oath, you lose the channel divinity powers and unlock the Oathbreaker. Now, of course, you can't restore your oath. And just like Catholics since time in memoriam sold get out of the jail cards called indulgences, as long as you're ready to shit golden bricks, you can save your hypocrisy too. Yay, money solves everything. 
As for the subclass itself, it's the Age Lord on steroids, like a weeaboo who thinks that Bleach is cool and probably consumes it too. But what does he do? Well, like Vengeance, you can target somebody and start hitting them more precisely and deal more damage. But you know, the funny thing in Baldur's Gate is that the subclass basically becomes the Pokemon Hunter Extraordinaire. Thanks to one of Channel Divinity powers, you can take control over the undead. And that has led to some interesting and funny things. Oh, and the Oath's Channel Divinity powers that you unlock here are completely new in Baldur's Gate, while in D&D it's far more depressing nothing burger. As for the standard Paladin Vankery, Lay on Hands is basically Cure Wounds Extra Edition, Divine Sense is only useful against Celestials, Fiends and Undead, and you also get that Oath Charge with your chosen Oath ability. And unlike Lay on Hands, it recharges on Short Rest. Level 2, it's Smite time! Though before that you get a fighting style choice, either go with a great weapon fighting or dueling. The other two, eh, not so much. But remember that most of the damage won't come from the weapon itself anyways. As for the smite, on a hit, this ability consumes a spell slot, and for each spell level it deals extra smite damage. On a miss you don't lose anything, eh, except your dignity. Now as for the hocus pocus, well the paladin is a prepared spell caster, meaning that like cleric and wizard every morning on the toilet you'll contemplate and decide which spells to pick from the whole spell list the paladin has access to, though obviously you can only cast the spells that you have spell bullets for, of which the paladin has woefully few. As for the spells themselves, well, the funny thing with the paladin is, well, unlike all the other spellcasters, most of the spells are shit, <laughs> or at the very least you won't use. No, seriously, you have far too many prepared spell slots already that you won't ever use, and that might sound like a good idea for versatility, but no. Out of the available spell list, you'll be using every single smite, bless, and maybe compelled to do. All the other ones you can fill in, but you won't use them, or have available spell bullets anyways. Level 3, you become immune to diseases. I mean, being a basement dwelling incel will do that. Now, in D&D, this is where you actually get to select your oath. In Baldur's Gate, each oath unlocks a new trick. Ancients gets, uh, meh. Devotion gets the only ability that actually matters, Sacred Weapon, and god it's good, and Vengeance morphs into a slightly less shittier Ranger. But okay, it's also decent. And the Oathbreaker gets a Hellish Rebuke and Legendary Pokeball. Level 4. Send Feed Picks. Right, at this point, not picking Savage Attacker is a colossal fuck-up. This feat rerolls Smite damage as well as the weapon damage. However, in D&D though, well, this feat is not as good. Instead, you should pick the next best choice, Great Weapon Master, or Lucky, perhaps. Level 5, Extra Attack and Second Level Spells. Here, like before, pick Smites and Aid. As for all the other spells, I forget about them. Oh, and also each subclass gets extra spells. Ancients and Vengeance gets the best stuff, while the rest can suck dick. Level 6, you unlock Aura Protection. This is the first of the auras that you can use without using action or bonus action to activate. Basically, now Paladin develops his incel mask that protects you from getting hit and bitches, so long as you stand nearby. Level 7, each subclass now gets a unique aura, except for Vengeance. Vengeance simply gets more pissed off and starts running faster. Ancient's aura reduces spell damage, which is very good. Devotion uh, can get fucked, and the Oathbreaker increases damage, which is very good too. Level 8, second feat. At this point, Great Weapon Master is a best choice, unless of course you're tanking and wanking with a shield, in which case Lucky probably is better. Or maybe stat improvement, it also doesn't go amiss. Level 9, third level spell bullets, uh, and that's gonna be the best you're gonna get as a paladin. As for the spells themselves, well, again, pick smites. Oh, and also revivify is a must, so, you know, remember to just keep one third level spell slot around, just in case one of the spellcasters in the party decides to keel over from the gust of wind. As for the oaths, well, they get more spells, but the only thing that you need to know is that Vengeance starts seeding so hard, it pops a blood vessel and has aneurysm, so goddamn hard that it starts attacking more. That is to say that it unlocks haste spell. Level 10, Aura of Courage. Uh, kinda garbage unless you're Devotion or Vengeance. Uh, for you, it's better than nothing, I guess. At 11, Improved Smite. Uh, yeah, it's nice to have, but looking at other classes leaves a bit of a bitter taste in your mouth, making you wonder if it wasn't smarter to multi-class about 5 levels ago. And finally at 12 we get another score improvement. Yay! And that's the Paladin. Now, certainly if you know how the class operates, it's far more fun to play up the rigid killjoy in D&D with roleplaying, but as a functional class. Well, okay, I can't deny that it's pretty fucking cool to blast a motherfucker with a big fuck-off sword and annihilate his prostate in one big swing. I mean, hey, that's how I love to play my Dark Souls games. A big fuck-off sword and off we go, baby! 
However, with D&D and now with Baldur's Gate, well, you kind of peak at a level 5 or 6 and you really start to wonder if it's not better to multiclass. Still, the implementation of oaths and how they are broken gets a, a bit fucky thanks to the video game mechanics. But even so, the class is unlike any other. And not just because of the hidden subclass. And oddly, though I hate the mechanics, sometimes I have fondness for Paladin even today. Oh.